Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, Basketball England Safeguarding podcast. My name is Lois Newton, um, relatively newer to Basketball England, been in post for about uh, just over a year now, ex-education, ex-head teacher, um, so quite a bit of expertise in terms of dealing with young people. Um, my route through to headship was entirely pastoral and safeguarding, so that's that's given me quite a good ground in, in, a, in an ex in an industry area that is very statutory in terms of its requirements uh, for safeguarding. I've got with me this afternoon, Lisa Ware from the CPSU, but I'll let you introduce yourself, Lisa. Thanks, Lois. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Ware. I'm a senior consultant for the Child Protection and Sport Unit, which is a team within the NSPCC. I'm sure you're familiar with us as an organisation. We're a, um, a large charity that looks after the safeguarding um, side of things within within the, um, the, the sector. So Similar to Lois, um, I've got a statutory background, um, worked in um, frontline social worker for 23 years this year um, mm -hmm. and I know a long time can't believe it and was a former netballer I know you might basketball community <laughs> a bit of rivalry maybe and um, but it was a netballer and um, played up to regional level was a coach club welfare officer a official so um, got a, an understanding of sport from multiple um, and yeah, from all angles around. please I've seen it from, yeah, all, from all angles Lois yeah that's great um, and just to say that Lisa is um, the uh, the member of I suppose lead staff at the CPSU who just recently undertook um, our safeguarding standards audit which um, Lisa I'll let you do the honours with that one even though I'm desperate to. Yeah no it was it was it was a fantastic meeting that we had in July and it was really clear from from yourself and from Laura and and Stuart your CEO the passion that Basketball England has for making sure that athlete welfare is at the centre of everything that you do and the safeguards and is priority and that was clear you know throughout the whole governance structure that you know from the CEO right the way down to um, kind of volunteers within the organisation that people feel really strongly about making sure that athletes are safe within your organisation so just proud to say and pleased to say that um, Basketball England um you know, continue to meet the safeguarding standards within sport, which is set out by um, CPSU and um, as part of a Sport England requirement as well. So congratulations on that. And Thank a you. lot of hard work for, for you and work. the rest of the team. Yeah, so well done. But well worth it, well worth it. Um, before we kind of get on to um, the, the bits of information from yourself, Lisa, I'm just going to update um, staff and, and the workforce, the wider workforce, on a couple of things. So um, those of you out there will know that we've recently launched our safeguarding po policy, the updates to that. We are going to talk about some of the bits, the main changes in there that focus mainly around poor practice, low level concerns, and also a little bit around neutral reporting. So we'll talk a little bit more around um, the sort of what that means and, and what we would ask, particularly of, of welfare um, staff and volunteers in the workforce that are out there. So that's an area to cover. I would also mention, um, haven't all, all, already mentioned that part of my role is around education. So we will have some really exciting news around education over the next uh, nine to 12 months that will be hugely be beneficial to members um, around safeguarding training. So I know that lots of you out there will be undertaking your level one, possibly your level two, uh, safeguarding training at the moment in readiness for the new season uh, but that's something that we hope as Basketball England we will be able to help significantly with and we're working on that um, and it's the developmental work around that is 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 continue at the moment so I will come to you with further information that over the coming months but that's really exciting because it will really help um, those of you out there um, that have that as a requirement. Um, I will just move on to uh, some of you will know that we that I sent out an email to all welfare workforce across the country to ask around sort of the themes and the things that you would like covered um, in a series of podcasts. The things that Lisa and I will particularly focus on today are, do centralise around low level um, concerns, some around adult behaviour, parent behaviour and some of those challenging situations that we find ourselves in sometimes. 
People also asked around behaviour management around players. They also asked around nutrition, accessibility. Um, people have posed questions around the, the, the trans community and what that means in terms of, in terms of the sport. Some of those topics we'll pick up in, in later podcasts. Today's uh, podcast, we particularly wanted to focus on um, some other areas. But I know, Lisa, that you're really central and, and have a, an understanding around some of the national themes. So what are, from the CPSU's perspective, what are the national themes that you're seeing come through at the moment? Yeah, I think some of them are similar to what, what you've raised as well, Lois. Um, body images it is a particular area that we get quite a lot of people asking us about. So we've got you know a series of podcasts on our website that people can look at. But we know from our Childline colleagues, so Childline is part of the NSPCC, and we know that this is a big area of concern for children and young people as well. So um, it's the eighth highest topic across the whole year for Childline of consent contacts from children and young people. And particularly during the summer months, so between June and September last year, um, 40% of counselling contacts from children and young people was around body image. So I think it's something particularly we know within sport there's additional vulnerabilities and people are more likely to have disordered eating or eating disorders um, because of the nature of sport, um, particularly in certain sports like weight making sport or anti-gravity sports. So for those, I think that we do need to get better at educating ourselves and our, our volunteer workforces around that. So it's great to hear that you're going to be looking at that with your um, medical staff later on in the year. So that's fantastic. But in the meantime, if people want more information, they can find that out on the CPSU um, website. And as I said, we've got a series of podcasts there from a um, professor, um, Caroline Plateau from Loughborough University on our website. Perfect. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. It's, it's a it's it's a key theme that needs um it needs a bit of debate and it needs a bit yeah. of education around it. So that and uh, for those those that are listening to this podcast, um, as Lisa's mentioned, we'll come to you with more information from some of our clinical staff and our nutrition staff in terms of how we can positively promote um good nutrition um and, and positive eating habits really. Um, across across the sports but if we move on to some of the areas now that we do want to kind of touch on this afternoon so one of those uh, areas is how we recognize um, perhaps as welfare staff um, how we recognize low level concerns what we do what we mean by neutral reporting um, I know that some of the questions that I've had are around bullying behavior from adults so specifically one of the questions was you know does does shouting at children you know equate to bullying behavior you know does that count as a low level concern so in terms of low level concerns from your perspective dealing with neutral reporting separately what's your what's the cpsu take on you know the things to look for and why we need to kind of uh look for these things lisa yeah, so i think from our end of um the perspective lower level concerns is about it it's not necessarily something that's insignificant um it is something that we should be looking out for it is when we've got concerns around somebody's behavior um it's not meeting the threshold for statutory services but it is breaching our codes of conduct you know what we should be all doing when we're participating in sport whether we're doing that as a as an athlete or as a club member of staff is we should be treating everybody with respect um so if shouting is is something that becomes part of a club culture for me that is something that would meet that that threshold of a lower level concern um, and we need to be raising that we need to be calling that out because what we want to do is we want to create a culture where people are able to thrive in that that people are enjoying their sport that they're having fun and if we go there and people are you know raising voices and shouting and screaming then that that doesn't create and foster that nature and environment that we want to see in in youth sport so so we need to be able to kind of raise those concerns um, and and it might be that it's you know having a conversation with a club welfare officer who can address that behavior because people might not be mindful of of their own behaviors it might be that 
people have got other things going on in their lives and we all know that you know life is can be quite stressful so we need to be reflective on our own um or on, on our own self-regulation. So if we're not feeling regulated, we're feeling stressed in ourselves, is are we the right people at that particular moment to be able to take training? Can we get some support from other people as well to be able to help us so we are mindful um, of our own behaviours? We want to be able to show that we're positive role models to our children and young people. Um, and when we get upset because we're losing, then that's not being a, a good role model. We need to be able to help and support young people to emotionally cope with sport as well. So when we're um, when we're not winning um, or a decision goes against us as adults, how do we respond to that? And our young people are going to be watching us, watching for cues, um, trying to look at the adults to say, this is how we should behave. Um, so we need to be able to, to show young people that our positive side of when we're, we're coping with, you know, stresses, failures and all the rest of that type of thing. So, so it, it is for us just to be very mindful of that and how we support young people to, to be able to, 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 to cope with those, those stresses and strains of sport and physical activity. Yeah. And I think it's some of the things, some of the words that you've used in there is around, you know, a sporting environment, no matter what it is, should feel fun to a child. Yeah. You know, it should feel, Absolutely. sometimes it will feel a little bit challenging and that's okay. Um, It kind of pushes people forward, but it should feel fun and they should want to keep going back because that's how the sport yeah. thrives. It's how young people develop and thrive. And we know that from a number of other situations. So it's about, it's about making sure that we can take, sometimes I think a step back, isn't it? And look at that situation and, and decide whether or not, you know are these young people having a good time are they thriving are they being a bit challenged but you know are they developing as young people and I think you know the other the other kind of flip side to lower level concerns that we you know unfortunately we do need to be mindful because sometimes you know it might be that you know a particular member of the volunteer workforce has had a just had a rubbish rubbish day and you know they're they're, they're, they're running that session and and they're just being a human being but actually unfortunately we also know the flip side of that is is lower level concerns can be a precursor to much more serious concerns and actually what basketball england want to do is make sure that we create a really safe space for young people and that actually we are not allowing anybody that has an agenda that is less than positive to enter um, our sporting field because we know that you know people that have that agenda might you know, as a, as an example, they might say, you know, offer a child a lift home one night and, you know, you kind of look at it and go, oh, it's a one off. It's OK. And sometimes it might be about the frequency. If you have the conversation with that person, say, look, you can't do that. But if they repeat those types of behavior, then you've really got to kind of question that. So we know that there are individuals out there who will use low level behaviors as a precursor to more serious behavior and and sometimes that's what people need to be kind of mindful and, and unfortunately yeah. you know it, that that is that is the case so we just need to be kind of mindful of that of course a couple of caveats to this of course are that um we know that basketball is a noisy sport people do sometimes raise their voices and you know people do shout and i think there's an element of people need to use uh, professional judgment when it comes to uh, shouting uh, within the sport of basketball. Um, you'll need to be able to look at that situation and, and kind of consider, you know, is that is that relevant to where and what's happening at that time? Perhaps the proximity to the individual who's being spoken to, uh, the situation that's arisen, uh, the kind of the tone and, and how that situation feels. And sometimes a good way to think about that is to consider whether or not it's a if it was happening outside of the sport, would you accept it in, in the same way? And, uh, you know, so unfortunately, sometimes there is just a little bit of judgment and professional judgment that you have to use in those situations. But again, if you're ever unsure, then, you know, have that discussion uh, come to us, have that discussion or have that discussion with other members um, within the club just to kind of ascertain how you all feel and how comfortable you feel with that situation. Um, and I would also 
you know, we've also referenced, uh, you know, taking trips, you know, giving children and young people lifts in cars. It's not the only type of low level behaviour um, that's out there. Um, there are lots of other examples, you know, another good example would be like in social media posts uh, that, that children post and, you know, having that kind of engagement. So I think a lot of the time what you've got to ask yourself is, you know, is that person meeting the expected standards as set by the club and as set by Basketball England? Um, and there's, you know, there's it's it can it can feel quite overwhelming sometimes it can feel quite difficult um but again if you're ever unsure uh then there are people within basketball england safeguarding team you can have that converse, conversation with which kind of brings yeah. me round a little bit to to neutral reporting which um certainly from my perspective and i would imagine from your perspective lisa coming from a statutory field we're very well used to people neutral reporting in an education setting. You know, people, yeah. members of staff will come and say, oh, a child tried to follow me on social media. I haven't followed back. But, you know, so they will yeah. come and neutral report around things. But I think we've still we've still got a little bit of a culture in sport where people are a little bit afraid to neutral report. I don't know whether that's something that you'd agree with, Lisa, or, you know, you see it in a yeah. different way. I, th I think you're absolutely right. I think that within statutory agencies like schools, you know, you've got statutory guidance that people follow and yeah. that is an area that's been highlighted. Um, and I think that we're not the best at doing it in sport. I don't know why that is. I don't know what the blockers are, but we do need to get better at people being able to, to self-report because it's a way of, for me, it's, I think we need to make sure that children are at the centre of our decision making processes and if we get it right for children we're going to get it right for us as adults so by getting it right for the kids we're going to get it right for us so for us as adults we need to be knowing what are the policies procedures codes of conduct so that we get it right and they're there to protect as I said the children but ultimately they, they will as a knock-on effect protect the adults around us and it might be that people misinterpret how you've behaved so um for example if just use the example of, of giving somebody a lift home in a car um you know that might be done out of the goodness of somebody's heart yeah. and somebody might see that and think oh gosh they shouldn't be doing that they've breached the rules and it might be that that individual hasn't read the the, the policy around the safeguarding policy in full detail around not doing that because it's there to protect the children but also to protect the staff and one of the things that we did last year is we look after the safeguards and arrangements of the national school games finals okay. and it's a massive competition with a thousand children that participate in it and we brought in um neutral reporting self-reporting so an, an example of that was we had a um, member of staff or a volunteer had to take a child to the medical tent and they were in there for quite some time because you know young person got knocked about a little bit yeah. needed a bit of medical treatment um so by the time that they'd finished in the medical tent everybody had gone back to the halls um for their for their evening meal and it was starting to get a bit a bit dark and Loughborough camp campus is massive so it's like a 20 minute walk over from oh, the right, medical yeah. side of things over to the catering so best practice is you wouldn't be alone with a child so this member of staff's walking back getting dark with a young person somebody else might misinterpret that Situ situation so the member of staff called me for advice said that's great that you know what I'd like you to do now is to self-report that and complete the incident form so that it was then really clear that that individual knew what best practice was which was actually not being alone with a child but in this circumstance it was unavoidable um, and these are the reasons why great perfect I can I can look at that and I can assess that that was absolutely fine but as organizations what we need to be able to do is to record incidents of boundary violations whether they be physical or emotional boundary um, violations it could be around you know as you just said shouting screaming um it might be presence or favoritism yeah and that for all to be called out by all of the adults around and and young people as well and for us to be able to record that to see if there's a pattern of behavior is it that somebody just doesn't know the policy and they maybe need to go on some training they maybe need to have some awareness around what the policies and procedures are or is it as you said something more sinister so our colleague Marcus Aruga um who used to work for the NSPCC is well written in this area and talk 
talks about the slippery slope and those small rural breaks. So if we're thinking about child protection concerns like sexual abuse, they start by lower level concerns, poor practice, because there's an erosion away of the boundaries and people are testing the tolerance level of an organisation to see, can I get away with breaking yeah. the rules? And what we need to do in sport is to make sure that we've got, you know, a, a culture where we address um, rule breaking earlier on so that we can say this is a tight ship and we there's no room for abuse in our sport. And that makes it safe for everybody, children first, but then it makes it safe for the other adults as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's absolutely spot on. Um, just moving on, um, Lisa, from that, in terms of just pr promoting positive parent behaviour, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that this is an area that the CPSU have done, again, done some done some work on. What's the perspective there in terms of, and I know this is, you know, it can present a challenge to um, to staff at times, you know, volunteer or otherwise. What's the kind of... <laughs> We've all been there, I'm sure, at the sidelines where, you know, somebody's just got a little bit out of hand. Um, what's the what's the CPSU stance on how to manage that? Yeah, I think we've been on a journey with this, Lois. Um, you know, so when CPSU were, you know, we've been around for 20 odd years now as, an, as, a, as a team. And I think when we were first getting involved with sport um lots of sports were talking to us about this touchline behavior courtside poolside behavior and we started off with the whole you know this is what bad parents you know bad, <laughs> bad sports parents look yeah. like um and we you know we you know we've kind of made mis you know not mistakes along the way but we've we've looked at research right. Yeah, we've learned and we've looked at research and actually what we know now is instead of doing the, the finger wagon and saying this is this is the bad stuff, actually what we realise is that research tells us that the majority of parents are positive sports parents. It's a small minority of people Absolutely. who bring it down. Um, so back in the day, we had our um, our magic sports kit, which is available still at the moment on YouTube if people want to watch it. It's a really great, powerful movie, um, short short film um, from young people's voice. And now what we're doing is we're doing a new um, video to look at the positive parents inside of things because we recognise that we want to show people what positive parenting looks like, um, and and. You know, for us, it is about, you know, parents getting alongside their children, understanding what, why they're participating in sport. So is it that that young person wants to be, um, you know, kind of going, doing it just for fun to be playing with their friends? Or do they want to do it for, um, they want to be, you know, a, a world class athlete. So it's about parents getting alongside young people. We know that they're super important and we want to value their role within, um, within sport. But we all need to kind of be on the same page. So parents coaches and young people having those conversations earlier on um to say what is our our sport and achievements what do we want to achieve you know coaches getting alongside parents and help and for them to understand what the coaches um kind of plans are as well moving forward so they can support the coaches as well yeah and I think some of what you're talking about there is just I think when you know you the the ideal scenario from a basketball England perspective is you know we've we've kind of referenced a little bit throughout this whole conversation you're talking about you know safeguarding policy code of conduct and ethics etc cetera, etc cetera. I think that some of the you know some of the best practice out there is where clubs and and welfare staff during that induction period are talking to parents and saying look here is our code of conduct here are our policies these this is what we expect this is the positive practice and actually by me everybody kind of knows where they stand there they no, don't they in terms of what to expect and what's expected really um and it, it you know it constantly has to come back to that idea of um you know this has to be fun you know this has yeah. to be fun and nobody wants to you know nobody wants a young player on a court you know with somebody screaming at them from the sides it's just that's just not fun wouldn't be fun for me to be fair never mind yeah. a young person so um Absolutely. you know so we've just got to remain kind of mindful of those things haven't we haven't we really so yeah 
That's... Can I just give a big shout out? So parent people might be familiar with Parents in Sport Week. We've yeah. changed it over the last two years and it's called Keeping Your Ch Child Safe in Sport. So we've got a focus week, which is the first week in October. Um, it's a year long campaign, but the we, we have a focus week in October because we don't want it to be just we do it once a year yeah. we want people to be mindful of what their role is as a positive sports fan for their yeah. children and for the other kids on on the on their team and for the welfare staff listening to this that is something that basketball england will heavily promote as well so there will be information Brilliant. that comes back out on on the back of that so yeah that won't that certainly won't be missed by us Lisa I can assure you <laughs> um that and, and and you know a lot of the conversation that we've had really would you know for anybody now listening and thinking you know wanting to have a look at you know good sources of information are some of the detail that Lisa's given you the CPSU website you've got the Basketball England website in terms of all of the policies uh, and the templates that you can download for your own use whether it be the safeguarding policy whether it be looking at the code of conduct and how you can use that in, a, in your own clubs and in your own settings so please do make sure you're going and having a look at those sources of information and support um I will just um, kind of remind people some of the things that I said right at the start of this course, the start of this meeting was really around making sure that you have a look at the new safeguarding policy, particularly in relation to what we've discussed this afternoon, low level concerns, neutral reporting. Um, apologies to those other to those people who've put some of those topics forward around, uh, particularly around nutrition, accessibility and behaviour. I am really happy to say that I will be speaking to uh, one of our coaches, Sergio, up in Manchester, uh, hopefully next week around behaviour. Um, so that's coming really soon. Uh, nutrition. That's really exciting, it Lois. Because yeah, so he's, he's one of the co-founders of I Coach Kids. Yeah. And they've got some amazing materials on, yeah. their, on their YouTube channel. So that's a really good thing that he's yeah, a basketball yeah. coach. Yeah. And he's really keen to get involved with that. So all of these things are coming up. Um, so we will continue to to run a series of podcasts that people can listen to. We understand that this might be a more accessible uh, and easy way to kind of glean information other than sitting through and looking through heaps and heaps of information sometimes. So this this kind of style of presentation will continue to develop. Um, so all it really uh, reminds remains for me to say is thank you uh, Lisa from CPSU this afternoon for speaking to us remind us that the safeguarding team at Basketball England are there at any point so if you need to either email us give us a call we we, we have expanded over the last 12 months or so so there are more of us that can um can kind of sit with you and chat chat issues through as we know sometimes we all need to do so I would actively encourage people to do that um but you know keep an eye out for the podcasts that are coming up around some of the topics topics that we've mentioned um Lisa I don't know if you've got any closing remarks uh at this point I just think for me sport and physical activity is in incredible and what we want to make sure is that young people are always enjoying their opportunities to participate with us um we want to be able to create an environment which is safe which um takes into consideration the welfare needs of children and young people um and we want to be able to keep striving to help and support their child development um and we know that abuse or lower level concerns can potentially erode away that so you know let's keep being mindful of ourselves being you know self-regulated look at the policies and procedures to make sure that we're acting within them and you know pretty much just go and have fun as well because if you're having fun the kids are going to be having fun as well that's perfect um absolutely perfect yeah safe fun inclusive I think would be our some of our key yeah. three words um okay Lisa thank you so much for joining us this afternoon um I will speak to you again soon Brilliant. Thanks very much, Lois. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.